<laughs> Turn up. Let's explore how to make a crunchy and flake a hopia without being fragile. Yes, allow me to put on my engineer's hat to explain and demonstrate the principles of physics and material science included as applied in making hopia of your choice. We will understand the ingredients, the steps and the principles behind all those steps in making this favorite hopia. Brace up. This will be long, but learning and fun are guaranteed. Hello, how are you my friends? Welcome to channel one again. This is a channel not just for cooking tutorial, but we show the world that it's fun to garden and do home cooking. To be as self-reliant as possible. Yes, tonight we'll be making hopia. It's a cookie very popular in the Philippines, but it's of Chinese origin. It's the Chinese who brought it to the islands. It means happy cookie, happy cookie, hope yeah, happy cookie. Many YouTubers have made this, but no one, I haven't seen anyone explain the proper way of laminating. They show us the ingredients, but the principles of lamination and to make it crunchy, flaky, without making it fragile is never explained. We'll try to do the physics here tonight. <laughs> Stay with me. I will now show you the ingredients. Our first uh, ingredients, our first set, the main dough, or some call this the dough A, which is the uh, main crust. Let's just call it dough A, the dough, <laughs> the main dough. The second set of ingredients are what they refer to as the dough B, or bakers will refer to this as sebo, sebo, or the fold-in fat, or fold-in dough. This is where the uh, explanation will go. This is the area where we need some explanation. Let's set aside our dough B, or sebo, for now, and let's work on the first dough. This is the task now where we'll need help of our new mixer. These are the ingredients that give the main structure of the cookie, so they need special or the proper bread handling, which is kneading. Let's add first the dry ingredients. We don't need this uh, protection. Surprisingly, this doesn't need sugar. Just a flour, two cups of flour, salt. We also need one half cup of water. By the way, just refer to the uh, description box anytime for the complete ingredients. And one half cup oil. I realized I forgot to mix the dry ingredients first, but don't worry, our kneading hook will do the job. I'm happy with my mixer. It now reached the state that we want. Yeah. And we need this later. Let's put it on plate and let's work for the meantime on the uh, sebo or the second dough. For extra crunch, I'm using here a mixture of cornstarch and flour. Ideally, 100% cornstarch, but it's for me it's uh, three fourths. The roll of the dough B is to act as the separator between the layers of the dough A because we'll be laminating the layers later. To separate the layers we need something with a structure. Greasy and with structure. Butter is the ideal uh, material for that. But 
butter behaves differently at different temperatures. In warmer weather, of course, butter melts, so it loses structure, so we cannot use it. As an alternative, which is abundant in China, of course, in the Philippines, we use animal fat, lard, yeah, which is mixed with flour. The flour gives it structure because it's uh, always or it's generally liquid, so we have to give it structure. We have to give it structure so that it is able to separate the layers. We'll be explaining later the layering or the lamination process. Let's work on this first before we go further with the lecture. So this is uh, Crisco shortening, uh, healthier replacement for lard. This is not available in the grocery stores here in Holland. I had to search through the internet to be able to buy it. And you know where I bought it? I typed where to buy Crisco in the Netherlands and I found the store. You will not believe where I bought this. If you will see it, you will never want to eat this. If you're curious, search where to find Crisco in the Netherlands and you will not see what appears in there. You've been warned. We need one and a half cups of this uh, grease for this mixture. Did I say one and a half? No, it's three fourths. Three fourths. Refer to the uh, ingredients, list of ingredients in the description box anytime. This one half, this measure half of one half to make it three fourths. Okay, this should be three fourths. We don't have to need this mixture, just mix. Incorporate. As I've said earlier, the uh, flour gives a structure to the grease. I need to use this as quicker. And due to those lectures, I forgot the sugar. It's not too late to add it. This is a task where we need the apron. Powdery, dusty, messy. Especially the doors are oily. I washed this earlier. We now do the process of what we call lamination. Pagbabaston, sabi ng karamihan panadero, but this is actually laminations. It's the creation of the layers. And these layers later will create the uh, flakes. So we have to do it right to make it really flaky and crunchy. Make a square, flatten the dough as square as possible. Place the roll in dough at the center, preferably even and using the flattened dough envelope the dough be just like folding an envelope
This is what I meant where folding as envelope. Treat the uh, fold in though as a letter and roll it lengthwise. And this is to spread the uh, grease inside the envelope, thereby creating two layers now. Two layers. Make it as square as possible or rectangle as possible, I should say. You will not prevent breakages, it will happen. No problem. And then fold the uh, dough lengthwise three times. Make three folds to put it better. Flatten it and roll it again. That is to distribute the uh, grease inside or between the layers. So two times three, we now have six layers. Now, fold it three folds together, or fold it three times, we've created six times three. That is approximately now 18. And roll it lengthwise. And fold it again, fold it three times. So that would be 18 times three, <laughs> approximately the number of layers. Yes, breakages are not avoidable with this approach, but it's worth it, really. I've seen even professional bakers having breakages in this procedure, but the key is to be able to create the layers. I lost focus, sorry. We should do this better next time. We should do this three times. Let me just illustrate. Let's assume this is the uh, main door and the sebo or the uh, roll-in door, yeah? So we've seen us fold them like this. Fold, fold. With three, uh, three, three folds, we made three folds. So that's what the layers that we created. That's what the layers that we've created. Most YouTubers demonstrate cutting on this axis and then flattening on that axis, flattening on the slice side. The reason for creating the layers is to provide the crust, the flakiness. So if you stamp it on this side, you lose the purpose. It will disintegrate. Yeah. So better. For me, I'm gonna cut it here and stamp it here. I'll demonstrate. So we retain the flakes. I don't know if there's a reason for stamping it or flattening it on this side. The uh, pastis de Belen of the cookie of Macau and in Portugal, the flatten it on this side. Perhaps on the tradition. Instead of layers, you introduce cracks along the surface or faults that makes the crust brittle. First bite and so And that's, that's the experience you want once you bite on your hobby. But for me, I want it flaky without being fragile. I want it sumasabog. Sabog ang you sabog sa damit. So, we'll cut now. It's time to do the fillings. Thank you, Atispair, for this uh, pre-prepared <laughs> Mungo filling. You can, by the way, you can make your own filling. Your choice. And this is Channel One's version.
with marching lecture on physics. <laughs> you know, I prepared a mold with a bottomless mold, but I wash it in the uh, dishwasher and it crimp. <laughs> Look at that. Our Hopia Panaderia style. Artisanal, irregular in shape. <laughs> irregular in shape. I forgot to mention about the egg wash to give it the golden brown color. That will be good. I've heard from a professional baker that egg wash should be as thin as possible to get the best effect. I still don't know the logic, but I want to believe. The recipe indicates that ideally for that volume for our recipe, we should get 26 to 30. It depends on the size. Since this is on the bigger side, I've got here 25. This is a 26, but there's no space here. So I did not make it. Oh, I might as well make it, yeah? I might as well make it. 26. Now, into the oven for 20 minutes. Don't bake it for more than 30. That's a tip I learned because they will be dry. At 190 degrees Celsius, or if you're in the US or North America, 400 degrees Fahrenheit. I have a confession to make. I left the oven on and went to the gym. So I'm sure it's now cook. Let's uh, let's check. Let's see the result. And I'm sure it's no longer uh, hot. But uh, we might as well use this. For not bad for a first timer. Didn't turn brown as I expected. But I think I think the temperature setting was lower. But let's check. Let's start with the smaller one. It's really flaky. Yes, it's really flaky. <laughs> Turn it off. Mm. I'll show you the flakes. I told you, laminating it correctly makes it flaky and crunchy. It does a break. For a first timer, I'm happy with the result. So I hope you enjoyed our Opia Happy Cooking. My very first here on Channel 1. If you enjoyed what you've just seen, don't forget to subscribe, share. Go on the ng Opia. Your choice of feeling. Until next time.